Hi, my name is Cash and welcome to another video here on Cashed Out Cars. In today's video, we are talking about reusing used clutches. Now, the bottom line is if you want to be sure that your clutch is going to be in good shape and isn't going to slip and you already have your transmission out and you don't want to do it again, you should probably buy a new clutch. But in some cases, you could reuse a clutch, which is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. First, let's take a look at two used clutches so I can show you varying condition clutches and then we'll jump into how to resurface a clutch to make it usable again and help it bed in easily. Let's jump right into it. So this right here is the stock 1.6 clutch which I'm pulling out of my Miata. This clutch was used for about two years but it really only has a couple thousand miles on it. Some of that was while this car was turboed though which is the reason why I'm replacing this clutch. So let's take a look at this and see if we think it could be reused. So taking a look at the pressure plate here it looks like it wore fairly evenly. Like I said it doesn't have a lot of use on it but one thing I do notice is there's a little bit of marking right there from heat and there's just a tiny, tiny bit of grooving right there from the clutch. Now, it's really not a lot, and in my opinion, this pressure plate is 100% reusable after we touch it up just a little bit, which I'm going to talk about after. The clutch disc here also has a lot of life left in it. If you look right there, you can see that there's a lot of meat left on this disc, and that's really not used up. What you want to look for if you think that your clutch disc is used up is you would see that there's really not a lot of this friction material left on the disc, and you might be worn down to those rivets and things like that that are in the disc, and that would be an indication that your disc is completely shot and you shouldn't use it. While you're taking a look at your clutch disc here, you also want to look at the springs, make sure everything's in good shape, make sure there isn't any obvious damage to it, and if it looks good, you probably could reuse it if you want to. You also could take a look at different angles and just try to see if there's any uneven wear on it. On this disc, there's a tiny bit more wear on the outside than on the inside, but it's not a huge deal, and like I said, I think this clutch is good to reuse if you choose to. Moving on to the flywheel here, we have a very similar situation. We have just a little bit of marks from heat on this side of the flywheel, but in general, this surface of the flywheel is still in really good shape, and actually, we still have a lot of the machining marks from when I got this thing from the factory. So, this had really light use, and if your flywheel looks like this and has nice even wear, then it's good to reuse. The next clutch that we're going to take a look at here is a upgraded clutch that once again is used, but it's the clutch that I am going to put into my car after I put just a little bit of work into it. So once again, if we take a look at this clutch disc, it has a lot of meat left on it, and it looks like it's been used, obviously, but it hasn't been used up, and there's still a decent amount of life in it. And then if we look at the flywheel here, this is where we see that this thing definitely has a little bit more use than that other flywheel. Taking a look, we could see that it had quite a bit of heat put in it, and it's discoloring just a little bit there, and we do have some marks around the edge of the surface. Now, these are not deep grooves, and they're not extremely blue, dark marks that would indicate that there is a ton of heat in here, but it is marked just a little bit, and I will be cleaning this up just a little bit, which I'll be showing you soon. Once again, the most important thing is that you look for cracks, you look for damage, and you look for big grooves in your discs. This does doesn't have that it's still quite flat and with a little bit of work I think this thing is going to be fine to go back into my car. One thing you also want to take a look at is the bearings. I would not recommend reusing bearings when you're doing this job almost no matter what. This bearing here we could see that the seal is pretty deformed which means you probably won't want to use that. I'm going to be putting a different bearing in here and also you want to keep in mind that these things might be greasy and no matter what you should be degreasing these with something like brake clean or a heavy duty degreaser so you don't get any grease on your clutch because that will make it slip. Another thing to keep in mind is while you're handling this stuff you don't want greasy hands but either way you should really be degreasing this anyway. Taking a look at the final component here this pressure plate does have the most wear out of all of the components here. We could see there's the darker ring around the outside but there aren't any big grooves or anything like that. The surface feels smooth and it's just little markings that we're going to be able to scuff up so the clutch rebeds itself in and then we'll be in good shape to use this. 
So in summary, you could reuse a clutch if you don't have the money to buy a new one. I would recommend trying to buy a new one if you have the budget to spend on it, but in some cases, like mine right now, I don't really want to spend a couple hundred dollars on a new clutch when I have one that's been used and with a tiny bit of work can be just fine and do the job of a new clutch. Again, I would recommend replacing your bearings pretty much no matter what, and as I say that, I'm actually not going to replace mine. And and the reason for that is my throwout bearing has about 2,000 miles on it and my pilot bearing came out of the old flywheel with no problems at all and it's still in great shape so I'm going to reuse it. But if you're in here and you don't like dropping your transmission, I would replace those bearings and if you really don't like dropping your transmission, I would just spend the money on a new clutch. Alright, so after those recommendations, you decided to go ahead and use your used clutch again, and now I'm going to show you how to resurface it, which will just refresh the clutch just a little bit and help it bed in once you install it in your car. To do this, what you're going to need is some degreaser or brake cleaner to blast all that grease off of your clutch. You're going to need some rags to help get all that junk off of there. And then you're going to need some sandpaper or a sanding disc on a drill like this. And you don't want too coarse of a sandpaper that's really going to mar up the surface. You just want something that will scuff up the surface, give it just really light grooves that will help the clutch disc bed in. This disc is around 220 grit and you could use this or something just a little bit finer depending on how scuffed up you want your surface to be. So the first thing we're going to do here is just blast it, get all that grease off, and then we'll get ready to scuff it up. Now that this is degreased, you could take a final look at it. I'm running my finger over this, and there is just a tiny little groove here. It's not too bad, though, so once I scuff it up, I think the clutch disc will bite right into this again, no problem. Now you could go ahead and get your sandpaper or your drill ready, and what you're going to do here is just lightly go around the entire surface very evenly and scuff it up so there's little crosshatch marks in your pressure plate and your flywheel. What this is going to do is give your clutch disc something to bite into and bed into so it'll really get set into this pressure plate, get set into the flywheel and be a nice matched combo that will give you good performance with your car. It's really important that you keep this flat here. Honestly, I wasn't doing a perfect job there. And the flatter this is, the better your surface is going to come out and the better your clutch is going to do long term. Once you're pretty happy with how scuffed up your surface is and it's nice and uniform with no deep gouges and of course you still want to keep everything nice and flat, you could go ahead and re-clean it. Once again, I'm just going to hit it with some brake cleaner. And this will get off any leftover grease and it will also get off any little chips that were made from the sanding process. We're making pretty good progress here on this flywheel. I'm going to go ahead and just go a little bit more, make sure that I get this nice and uniformly scuffed up throughout the whole contact area, not just the center, which is what it looks like I have right now. And then I'll degrease this a final time, and this thing will be resurfaced in my driveway good enough for me. All right, now this thing is all scuffed up, and I have to say I'm quite happy with the results. It has a really nice uniform, like, crosshatch pattern on there, which will be perfect for bedding that disc in. So now this thing's good to go. The last thing that you should do is obviously change your bearings, but I'm not going to cover that in this video because it's pretty self-explanatory and there's other good content on that. So the last thing that I did was inspect my clutch disc itself. This you want to make sure, once again, that it has even wear and that it has enough meat on the clutch pads so it's not going to wear out right away on you. You also want to make sure this isn't contaminated with grease and oil, and if it got grease and oil on it, you really should consider replacing the disc. 
to wrap up this video, once again, using a used clutch in your car isn't necessarily the best idea, but it could be done with a little bit of work and you'll end up with a good working clutch at the end of the day, unless it was so far gone that there was really no hope. Another thing to consider is if your flywheel is severely gouged, you could have a machine shop resurface it, which will get you really good results that are better than something that you could do in your driveway. But unless you have deep gouges or surface cracking or things like that, doing something like this in your driveway is okay to do. With all that said, that is going to wrap up this video. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know down below what kind of clutch you're resurfacing for what kind of car and why you're doing it. And don't forget to just subscribe for more content like this. I hope you stick around for the next one.